Hello, networkers, and welcome back to part two with our conversation about the continuing education program that Cisco has for how you can recertify your certifications. So I talked about this a lot in part one, so watch that video first, but I wanna kind of provide a very quick update in terms of my experience with it because I said I was contemplating of using this program because I thought it was a better fit where I don't have to be worried about trying to study for a certification and dealing with questions that really aren't applicable for what I do or for what engineers would typically do for their jobs. So I was really, really interested of going through this particular path for the continuing education program. So I did it and I am recertified for another two years. So it is definitely a way better program compared to going through a certification um, examination process. So I wanna kinda of talk about my experiences of what I did and some of the pros and cons to keep in mind that you can definitely consider if you're looking at trying to recertify your certification. So first things first, as I talked about before, that there are a particular number of credits that are required based on what you need to recertify. And this kind of reflects what I talked about earlier, that for a CCIE it requires 100 credits the CCMP or the professional level requires 90 credits and for the associate it is 80 credits. So basically what Cisco has done that if you get recertified with a higher certification, everything lower will also be recertified. So you can kind of see here that once I completed my requirements, then everything else was also kind of updated to reflect when that needs to be recertified. So that's also a very good thing that you can definitely keep in mind. Okay, so what did I actually do? So I was looking at a couple of particular classes to get the 100 credits that I needed. But I found a very different path. Just because I'm experimenting with this and trying to figure out how this works. I know that I need 100 credits. So one of the particular things here that on this page that I can go ahead and I can kind of browse through the particular library to see what kind of credits I can actually consider. And if you go up here, as I talked about, there's something called the item catalog. And then here again, you can see all the particular courses that we can take. Uh, we see the item type, the number of credits, we can view details for all of that. But I kind of cared about digital learning. I did, did not want to go to some instructor led training. For one, it's very, very expensive. That's what I noticed. And it will take more time. I wanted to do it on my terms. So digital learning was something I was really, really focused on. So what I did up here was I simply went up to kind of like select category and I was looking at some of these options here. And one of them is the Cisco Learning Services. So I went ahead and kind of checked that out. I selected that, did a search, and this reflected all the particular training I can consider. Now, I browse through each of these to kind of figure out what is a good fit, what can I really take advantage of learning something new. And on one of the pages, I believe it was page number four, there were a lot of particular things about software defined access, SD access, which is basically SDN in a LAN campus environment. So I said, this is fantastic though. So let me just learn more about that and see if it's a good fit for me to kind of explore further as a network engineer. So I determined though, like one of the particular links here, I can go and go to view details, but I see that for this one, which is, what was this one called? Planning and deploying SD access fundamentals for customers 1.0 that it has 12 credits. So you go to view details and I'll go to a different page and you can go ahead and do view, tail, view details again and that will redirect you to the Cisco Learning Library which you see something like this. And then from there, you can simply go ahead and launch the course and it is a video based course with a particular outline that you can go through. You need to watch all the videos in the particular series rate it, which is what I you know, wanted to do to kind of to provide my feedback that these videos are better than other videos in their particular collection. You know, I, I like to give that kind of feedback. And once that was completed, I was able to download a certificate file, a PDF certificate file that I can then um, submit through the continuing education program page under submit items. And here it is, right? Very simple stuff was not complicated at all. I, re I reflected which particular course I took, the item type, which is you know the digital learning or the Cisco learning library, 
the start date, the completion date when I completed it, and of course I uploaded the certificate file. So this is what I did. I actually went ahead and I found all the particular courses that I could take through the Cisco Learning Library because there are a lot of different um, classes that are available here. But I had to make sure that it corresponded with what was supported on the Alsho item catalog for the particular credits that I need. So I just kind of figured out, well, what classes do I need to take? So I'm gonna go back to the dashboard here. And this right here is what I took. These are all the particular classes that I took part of the Cisco Learning Center that equal to 100 um, credits. So I spent like a whole week just pretty much doing like a cram session of watching these videos, kind of taking notes, kind of taking kind of getting as much information that I can and learning from it. And I got my certificates, I submitted them. So I had obtained, if you do the math here, all 100 um, credits. Therefore, once I got everything that I needed, then uh, I, w I waited like another month or so, because you know, I was busy with other things here. But once I have earned all 100 credits, this will of course change. And then from there, I went ahead and submitted to the application, uh, selected all of these as part of my 100 credits because I could have other courses on here, but these are the ones that I took. And then once that completed, I went ahead and had to pay, which I talked about earlier, I had to pay the submission or the application fee to recertify, which is $300. And from there, ta-da, I, I got an email saying that congratulations, you have been recertified until January, 2021. And that means that this is the official date that when I reach this particular date, I will be a 20 year CCIE. And that is everything that I want to provide for part two for this video. And uh, so very quickly, some pros and cons. So the big pro is it is very easy and convenient. Number two, I do not have to worry about trying to study for a recertification exam and learning about ISIS and other technologies that I don't deal with with my customers or projects today. So this is definitely more convenient and is a better value add for network engineers that have been doing this for such a long time or even starting out. So like once you get your CCNA, use this and get your 80 credits and you're good to go. I think that's a better fit than, research, than, than the actual exams. So that's the big pro that I see. And that is it. So if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to get updated on new videos that we release on this channel for Ask a Network Engineer or anything network related. And if you want to support this channel further and see more content from this and to support what I'm doing, you can do that at rodhub.net or through our Patreon page, my Patreon page, where you can just donate $1 a month and that means a whole lot to keep the channel going and to push more content and different things that I want to do in the future. And until next time, as always, keep networking.